An Australia without rugby league is not Australia. Um, rugby league has been a fabric of our society for hundreds of years. It's people's escape, it's people's relaxation, and we need to do everything in order to continue that great uh, tradition of rugby league. It has been those Australians who have worked hard every day. They have their dreams, they have their aspirations. These are the quiet Australians who have won a great victory tonight. I'm pleased to announce that the ARL Commission unanimously decided to appoint Todd Greenberg as its new CEO. It's well known. Todd not only ticked all the boxes, he nailed them. Hello, Jess. With that voice there, who, I don't know who that was, but that certainly sounded to me like, who's the poodle from South Australia who was part of the Liberal Party and, and pulled out before the last election results? Do we have well, a name? Christopher Pan. Christopher Do you mean Christopher Pan? <laughs> it has a certain South, South Australian <laughs> sort of upper class sort of tone to it, doesn't it? Well, I, I don't want to conduct a history lesson, but I will. That, of course, was Sheriff Grant, who used to be the chairman of the Australian Rugby League Commission, introducing his offsider, who we fondly dubbed Chief O'Hara Greenberg. That's right. <laughs> um, sadly, has uh, sailed off into the sunset this week, Stephen. The commission's gone. Look, we, we've always said that, that football is a harsh mistress. I reckon nature is a harshest mistress. And nature, with this COVID virus, is now inflicting all sorts of market marketplace damage. And Todd, like Raylan, is one of the one of the casualties at this point in time. Would you concur? Or would you say it's purely an in-house soap opera loss that we've had to, you know, incur with Todd going? Well, I mean, and we are on fire ups quite Australia, going out on the Diamond Cena podcast network and. <laughs> You can hear us hopefully sometime soon on FBI 94.5 on your FM dial. <laughs> Indeed we are. <laughs> uh, to, to me, I guess my overall conclusion about this has been a bad week if you're a CEO and you've got rugby in your job title <laughs> because yeah. we've lost Todd and Raylene in one hit. And well, there are only other codes with rugby in there, are there, Chris? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'd be concerned just football. You know, I'd hate to think that Gil McLaughlin and that other Evil code is uh, suddenly in trouble. Yes, he's, <laughs> well, what he's about flying the, under the radar. There's another code. There's another football code in Australia. It doesn't have the word football. Then it's called A League or football. Or it used to be called soccer. Sorry, soccer. Sorry. Um, who's the boss of that? Hasn't he been boned before? Hasn't he walked away? Imagine if they all just like shifted around one spot and we got back yeah. to gallop. Yeah. I, th- I think I interviewed, I, I interviewed the boss of the A League once. I can't remember his name. But, but I do like what they did during their crisis is they thought hard, looked at the numbers and came back to the players and offered them a pay cut of 100%. <laughs> now, Chris, can we go through the pros and cons of uh, our beloved Todd? Yes. Well, first of all, um, he was a man of rugby league. I mean, I know he was a cricketer, but essentially he rose to the ranks of rugby league, correct? Well, automatically, Stephen, this is contentious because, you know, right now they're not queuing up to replace Todd because I think it's pretty clear that uh, Andrew Abdo, who is acting CEO, will be acting for some time. He could be acting mm-hmm. as long as uh, Dr. Carl and Neighbours because I think Peter Volandis is, you know, going to do this job. But then there have been some names put forward. And, of course, straight away, Russell Crowe is on the front foot and suggesting yeah. Richo. And he suggested really? Richo because he says Richo is a rugby league man, not a yeah. cricket player. So uh, dig in. Does, that raises the question, is Todd... A rugby league person. Well, uh, Dennis, what would you say to that? Well, look, I'd say that if you listen to the great, the great Brandy Alexander, who, you know, is a, a wise, wise rugby league man, his recommendation was someone who's been on the board of a major corporation who has done his practicing year in a, as an accountant, as a practicing, certified practicing accountant, one Jeff Tuvey as as a CEO. Mm. Now he is a rugby league person, and imagine that yeah. right now he could finally have that yeah. investigation. What could be better than that? <laughs> now, now, from what I understand is that Volandis is an accountant as well. <laughs> Degree in commerce from Wollongong University, mm. chartered accountant. That's about the extent of it as far as I can gather. 
Well, can I, can I have a little bit of input here? I've, I've had the opportunity to work with um, Mr. Volandis. Uh, really? He, back in the day when I was doing jingles. Oh, sorry, I did, sorry, sorry, when you say back in the day, you're talking about ancient Greek history here because the Greeks invented everything, correct? Ancient, ancient Greek history when yeah. uh, I was doing jingles like three years ago. And um, I don't Mr. Volandis. I had to interrupt, but please, it's Lord Volandis. <laughs> back here, back then he was, he hadn't been made the Lord at this stage, but he wanted a little jingle for New South Wales racing for the, the championships. And he got me and Rocco Fazzari on board. He'd seen our work with um, what was then called Fairfax, the uh, political satire. He loved that's in Queensland, big fan of mine, apparently. And oh, yeah. he said, Oh, come on board and, and do a, a jingle for us. And I went, yeah, sure. And they showed me the money. I went, yeah. And then he said, here's the lyrics. And I looked at them with these appalling, uh, these are just horrible. And I didn't speak mm-hmm. to the Lord. I only spoke to his marketing manager and his marketing manager. I said, these lyrics are awful. Can we have a bit of a license to change them? And he kind of went, oh, well, yeah. And mm-hmm. I made some recommendations as an expert chosen and paid money because of my expertise. And it came back. Yeah. We've tried to tell Peter that these aren't very good, but they're his own oh. lyrics. He wrote them himself. He really likes them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So we went with his lyrics and I've never put the ad in the show reel. And basically whatever Peter wants, <laughs> Peter yeah. gets. He's so is, that, is, 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 that a, is that sort of overlord tactics, Chris? Is that, you know, like the dark empire stuff? Is that going to work for rugby league over a period of years? Well, I mean, I, I, did you get all the way through the Star Wars movies, Stephen? Because I've never met I anyone. I did not. No. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's nine. I mean, come on now. Uh, but I think in the end, it didn't end up that good for Vader and his offsiders and what have you. So history tells us, or at least George Lucas and then the Disney Corporation tells us that ultimately the dark ways will not prevail. Um, who we've got on the Skywalker side, I'm not so sure. It does uh, um, make me ask, Dennis, out of interest, A, can we see that ad? And why did they hire you? Because it's, surely it's only your lyrics. Because I've never noticed you actually come up with an original tune as such. I don't know if that's an unfair... Well, that's, that's because you haven't done your research. I've done it for 30 years. I've done heaps of uh, original tunes and things. And, and, you know, that's in Queensland is an original tune. The Head Tape Heroes are original tune. There is, there is stuff like oh, that. Oh, but but, but I've, I've got to say, the, the, the takeout I got was that this is an autocrat. This is a dictator. This is, this is not a, a democratically elected leader. And I think it's what rugby league needs. Rugby no. league can't function if people have a, if people have a say because if people have a say, Nick Politis will run the place and everyone will go, oh, Nick Politis is having too much say, so he'll get run down. And it's it's they all want to fight. Whereas if you have an absolute a dictator with absolute power, which yes, he'll but make doesn't himself, that, but doesn't that dictator only exist on the on, at the at the pleasure of Nick Politis? <laughs> wow, this will <laughs> yeah. be interesting. I mean, he's not Murdoch. He doesn't actually own a gazillion billion dollars, does he? Yeah, no, look, I, it doesn't. And I think if you go into that Star Wars mythos, I think uh, it was uh, uh, Adam Driver from Girls, who's now a huge actor, and he played Kylo Ren. Um, but I think above him was Supreme Commander Snoke or something like that. So uh, there's a fair bit of Snoke around Politis, that's for sure, though he also <laughs> meets an unfortunate end at the hand of said Kylo Ren. And yeah. uh, but do you Spoiler think, alert! Yeah, well, well, no one's <laughs> going to see it, so no one cares. But, I mean... You've worked with the guy, Dennis Fact. You've, you've praised him saying he's the man for these times. We, we miss Todd Greenberg, Stephen, because he joined us in the past on Fire Up. Mm-hmm. Could you see Lord Volandis joining us on this show slash podcast sometime soon based through your personal connection? Oh, I, I think you underestimate <laughs> the charm of Fire Up, Chris. Sorry, sorry. So yeah, I really do. I really do. I, I think that they need us more than we need them. <laughs> We take nothing from them. <laughs> I don't see myself getting a job playing music for quite a while, so I think we're pretty calm there, you know. <laughs> mm. um, look, I have, I have extended an invitation to Lord Volandis on well, pretty much every six months to come to the show for the last five years. Have you? <laughs> and he hasn't come along. But I've got a few Rock friends in harness me. racing. I might try them. Give them a go. See how you go. Yeah. So to rugby league the musical, you're saying, and he's declined? Yes. Well, yes. Well, he's a busy man. Yeah, he's got to run racing. Yeah, but now he's running rugby league. So it, it makes more. I mean, it didn't make much sense to go to the head of racing and say, 
come to rugby league the musical if it was well that's true because uh, sheriff grant sheriff grant came to the show of his own volition toddy greenberg came of his own volition peter Beatty came to the show to see himself in the show um dave smith never came along but he provided me with a lot of content yes chairman grant that's impressive yeah bought the family and he seemed like a funny guy to me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, have you heard of, have you heard in the winds though that uh, the name Gallop has been banded around oh come really? on plus and Gallop yeah, and, well, yeah be come on back Dave it? come on back Dave yeah like now's the time we need to he was pretty miserable wasn't he pretty what miserable wasn't he miserable <laughs> on air you mean no yeah. I mean is running the, running the NRL yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> if you can come and fire up, you can run the NRL. No, no worries. It would appear to me, though, that, that can we just dissect Vlanis' skills? Because coming from accounting in Wollongong to harness racing uh, to big time racing, um, he, he, he's a money guy, right? He's, he, he knows how to sort of, uh, dare I say, generate income courtesy, well, primarily gambling. Um, <laughs> and, and obviously, he knows how to get businesses out of disasters. I mean, he's the right man for the job right now because we're in the trenches. Yes. Um, resumption day. Resumption day is coming. Correct, Chris. Oh, and we're going to look, explore this in detail in the next break, Stephen. Fantastic. Maybe he's oh. good for a short period of time, and then he'll just bury himself somewhere behind the trenches, a la you know Churchill or whatever, and you know, have sniffs of brandy and you know illicit drugs and stairwells and stay up all night long. Who knows? You know. <laughs> <laughs> leave it. Leave it to everybody else to fight the war. <laughs> other things like your vision of Churchill, apparently. Yeah, apparently he was not so good. <laughs> <laughs> But I think you're right. I think Volandis is, is here for a good time, not a long time. And yes. that we'll have this void that's left by Todd. He'll actually act in this role. And there's already, you know, machinations afoot. The broadcast deal is going to be extended at less money as a result of this, like probably right now as we're speaking, to shore up the financial security of the game. And once he feels that he's got a medium-term horizon in there, I think he'll step back. I mean, my mother was talking this morning about Todd Greenberg. And oh, saying yeah. how relaxed, relaxed and comfortable he looked at his press conference yesterday, like the weight of the world was off his shoulders. Yeah. But it's the list of candidates when the Lord eventually deigns to replace them that fascinates me. And I'll be interested yeah. if you guys had any perspectives on this. Like Give Andrew Astor. Anyone know who he is? Well, he, he's a yes man, right? He's one of one of the uh, hatchet men of uh, Vlanders, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, well, well, he, you know, he, he's the one who went to Google, Facebook, and Amazon with Volandis on that fact-finding mission before everything went to pot. Dennis, yes. you got any perspective on Abdo? I have absolutely no idea. He's um, he's who you'd cast in central casting as a spook because the, the whole job of a spook is someone who you meet them at a party, you talk to them, and then you walk out the door and you completely forget them because there's nothing yes. memorable about them. That's him. The great man. Yeah. That's and him. They, the grey man. And they've reeled off Gus. <laughs> Uh, Chris, oh, Chris and Dennis, what, what, is Gus, what, what is Gus running from? Everybody presents everything on a platter for him. Here, Gus, you do this. Gus, you do that. You're the great man. He has, no, no, no. I've got like, as if he's got something more important to do. What is he running from? He's, he's doing that because he doesn't want the responsibility. Because if he's the boss, he can't bitch about the boss. He can't moan and snipe and sit on the sidelines and say, this guy's yeah. a joke. And he can't argue because he's yeah. the boss. That's where the buck stops. And Gus the doesn't want that. Gus, Gus wants to be able to just throw, <laughs> sling stuff at people. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, would, I would agree with that. Gus's rugby league life is divided into three sections. And, you know, <laughs> those of you lucky enough to have cable TV would have been able to, you know, revel in, you know, Gus playing, you know, Newtown v Manly, Newtown v Parramatta on some of those classic games recently. There's his rugby league playing career, which ultimately he didn't get the great prize, right, which was the premiership, got close, beaten by Parramatta, Parramatta's first premiership, but he left unfulfilled and an unsatisfied person. He then assumes the reins of a rugby league coach with both the Canterbury Bulldogs and the Penrith Panthers, wins the ultimate prize, parlays that into origin success and is smart enough to get out. Hmm. So what he's in now is the salad days that Dennis points is, which he, with impunity, Hmm. driven by the fact that he originally didn't get what he wanted, got the next best thing, which was coaching immortality. He, he, that's what he's running from. He's running from the fact he never won the comp as a player. Well, given, given the power of Channel 9 at the moment, um, I would have put the two spacemen, I put Joey and Freddie in as co-leaders for the NRL. 
Oh, what a competition that would what be. It would be hysterical. Oh. It would be party time. <laughs> oh. They're recording Freddie and the Eighth uh, up at Joey's, uh, at Freddie's farm at the moment. So, yeah. you know, they're on banana chairs, probably plotting. <laughs> so, so Volandi's Fitler John's axis sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's actually and- almost underlying who, who ultimately fits that last piece of the puzzle to go with Volandi's John's. And Fiddler, the cue comes from the clue comes from Matty Johns, Andrew's brother, who said Todd Greenberg's replacement needs to understand what lies in the long grass. Mm. <laughs> the snakes, the snakes, and the <laughs> spiders, and God knows what else. That's a good line, though. Uh, and and I mean, I think that uh, it's as we said, it's been a bad week for rugby-related CIOs. Raylene Castle has been uh, shown the door. Uh, friend of the show, Nick Far Jones, has been on fire. Up, you know. <laughs> The night of the long knives. It's terrible, terrible, terrible for me to see Wallaby captains disagreeing. Yeah. It, it my heart. <laughs> and and so sad to see Peter Fitzsimons write a letter in the press or an article in the press that was critical of Nick Far Jones because it would be the first time in recorded history that I think Peter has had issue with Nick. So rugby's on its knees. Okay, but, could I just ask? Did you did you read the Peter Fitzsimons article about Nick Far Jones? Of course. Oh, no, that's because that's probably the first time in recorded history anyone's read anything <laughs> Peter Simons has said. But what it says to me is that um, uh, it's been a tough time, but I think the, the Greenberg era will be remembered with ever-increasing fondness until they find someone to understand what lies in the long grass. But shall we end this section, Stephen and Dennis, with mm. the very famous words that Todd bequeathed us in his yes. time of fire up, fare thee well, Todd Greenberg. Mm-hmm. And what I say regularly is don't take the soap out of the soap opera. There's a bit of a soap opera about rugby league. <laughs> yes. uh, look, Chris, it appears in Dennis that uh, resumption day, the peg has been nailed on the ground. It is going to be May 28th. There's got no, no, no doubts, no, no, no wavering, no sort of, you know, quibbling. Uh, Channel there it is. Can get, uh, there it is, T-shirt made up. Uh, but today he announced, and it seems to be he's on a war footing, which is always good from a leader. Today he announced, this Friday, uh, is D-Day. Now, for all of us that don't know our history, uh, of course, D-Day was when the, the Allies marched on Normandy to basically take back Western Europe from the evil of Axis, the German Nazis and the Italians and whatever else. Uh, but unbeknownst to all of us, I didn't know this, but the actual um, project was called uh, Overlord. Really? I thought it was called Project Apollo. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about the Allies in World War Two, Chris. So am I. <laughs> I'm talking about D-Day, actual so D-Day. I, I saw it. I saw Saving Private Ryan, and you yes. know, and when all those guys came off those amphibious craft, and sort of they had such heavy packs on, they sank to the bottom of the sea because they landed in too deep water. Someone said on their radio, Houston, we have a problem. I'm sure that's what happened. Houston, we have. So Operation Overlord, it was called, Chris. Now, there's a lot of operations going now, and you mentioned one of them, Operation Apollo. That's the optimistic blue sky dreaming bubble in the sky, uh, unicorns and rainbows and little ballerinas and fields of tulips, et cetera, like our T-shirt. That's you one the T-shirt there, unicorns, rainbows and light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, it's a big yeah. fantasy. And it's a fantasy and a construct by, and I mean, maybe... What you're queuing us in here on, Stephen, is that we should be referring to him as Overlord Landis rather than just Lord yes. Volandis. I totally <laughs> would put a stamp on that one right now. Overlord Volandis is even better than Lord. <laughs> but, so Overlord Volandis comes up with the idea of we've got to name the project because it was the Innovation Committee. And, and I want to quickly say something about the NRL and their committees. They now have an Innovation Committee. Craig Bellamy said they actually should have called it the Stability Committee because yes. we need more stability in the game. However, he fails to realise that the NRL has a new rebooted medical and safety guidelines committee called the Workload Balance Committee. Yes. So I don't see how you can have the Stability Committee and the Workload Balance Committee, hence the Innovation Committee. Yes, so yes. This, this idea that the NRL has two <laughs> top heavy in administration is crazy Man. to me. I don't know how it's cost them half a million dollars today to run the game. Hey, Chris, I, pro- I protest as a member of the Vivid team because uh, our subline is uh, where creativity meets innovation. <laughs> yeah, somewhere out near Alice Springs, right? Exactly. <laughs> We're just left in the cold now, you know. <laughs> Rugby League gets back in May 28th. Give it. Gone. <laughs> Isn't there a story about the crossroads and Robert Johnson and where creative, <laughs> creativity met innovation? And Is that the start of the blues? 
Yeah, just taking old blues licks. Is that what Vivid's doing, wow. Steve? <laughs> yes, indeed. Rebuilding, rebooting it. But uh, bizarre but... innovation committees formed and they come up with the, the Save Rugby League, they come up with the Apollo missions. And, Dennis, we've pointed out Apollo 1, unfortunate fire on the launch pad. Apollo 13 barely made it back alive. So it wasn't all rainbows and unicorns with those, those mm. guys, was it? Oh, no, it wasn't rainbows and unicorns at all. And then, and then when the Apollo missions started to go, rather than being exciting explorers into deep science... No one cared. They, people lost interest. So the, the later Apollo missions were all scrapped because they were scientific yeah. and nobody likes science. We've established this no. for a long time. This is what you it don't was, want to listen to scientists. It was only the songs of Elton John and Dave Bowie that kept the whole thing alive, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> maybe maybe craft work later. <laughs> you couldn't move for a spacecraft theme song, could you? They were everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're delving into history here, guys. And then, of course... You know, the Apollo mission was a you know, very proud moment of history, but it was a reflection of a political thing called the Cold War, and there was an arms race on. And I mm. think that, in fact, Overlord Volandis has been quite canny here because if, <laughs> if, against all sensible judgment and belief, he does get the game back on the 28th of May, he will have mm. trumped the AFL. And I think there's a strong analogy that the NRL is like the United States and the AFL is like the Soviet Union. And isn't that the big battle after all? Boy. Yes. And, yes. and the thing is, the AFL structure, the AFL structure is probably not so much like the Soviet Union, probably more like a, maybe Cuba, Cuba or Romania. Or like it, it's very much a dictatorship. And Gil McLaughlin at the top, he, th- there's a pyramid, there's a triangle, and he's at the top. Whereas rugby league is this ridiculous multi-democracy where everyone hates each other, every entity hates each other. And this is where I think Volandis, the overlord, can come in. Because obviously the ARL Commission's job was supposed to be to be above the clubs, to be above New South Wales Rugby League, Queensland Rugby League, Australian Rugby League, all the NRL franchises, so the National Rugby League, all the junior clubs. It's supposed to be an overseeing body, but it keeps getting undermined by all the clubs. So until yeah. you get an autocrat and, in there. And the media. Overlord. And the media. And then you get the overlord. And that's where the overlord and, is the salvation. And to just carry that war footing one step further, didn't you not read, I think today, you said that Volander said, we've taken a few hits, a few punches, and like a good fight, you got to take a few to look like you're losing. And then the, the last punch is one that counts. Now, we don't know rope it over Ali, but Ali didn't, didn't you know, project his ideas before he actually went into the fight, into the ring. But I think, I think you, can, you can quote here, <laughs> the great prophet David Lee Roth is, is, the, is the master here. You've got to yeah. roll, roll, roll with the punches to get to what's <laughs> real. And that's what he's saying. He's <laughs> quoting David Lee Roth. Jump, I believe. Would that be right? Can you do a bit, a little piece of that for us, Dennis, or not? Um, <laughs> I haven't got the keyboard turned on. You need. Ah, to... damn. But, okay. But, I mean, th- there's a couple of things that, that come out of this. First of all, Roper Dope, where Ali beats George Foreman in Zaire. Yeah. That moment where he, where Foreman is heading the canvas, which is auto- immortalised on when we were kings, and George Plimpton and Norman Mailer are ringside, yeah. opposite the camera, and the Chris, look on their faces. I thought I saw you there too. Well. <laughs> I don't want to go through it, but can I simply say <laughs> Ali for my A? But you're probably, you're probably right about uh, Gil McLaughlin. I was looking at his hairstyle and saying it's a bit Stalin-like, but it's really Mao Zedong. I mean, that's really... Yep. Oh, yeah. That, yep, yep, yep. Oh, what and, about and, Kim Jong? And I don't want to accuse the AFL of being responsible for coronavirus, and I won't accuse them of being responsible for coronavirus. <laughs> now, overall, the land is... <laughs> One of the other things that's come, I mean, you know, and we say we're on a war footing, Steve, and one of the other things that's come to light this week is we know the previous shenanigans with uh, Volantis' uh, biosecurity and pandemic experts, which turned out to be the one woman. And he's punted her. But apparently now they're putting a biosecurity paper together for whatever format the competition takes, which surprisingly, given that it's on on May 28, we still don't know what format the competition <laughs> takes. It might happen during Chris- D-Day. <laughs> But he's consulting one of Australia's leading biochemical and weapons experts on this. I mean, what, <laughs> this is thinly veiled, isn't it? And none of them have any names, do they? They've not been oh. sort of like, no, there's no, no target point where you can look up their research papers. I can tell you here and now that on May 28, the Opera House is going to be emblazoned with rugby league. Oh, yeah, the, the draw the draw will be put up on the sails. They're holding that back. It's going to be before May 28. They're going to do it. I, I think they're actually going to do it. And, and this plays into the whole Star Wars thing. When's, when's, when are the teams going into the uh, pre-season? May the 4th, Star yes. Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Ah, so on that ah. day, he's going to put it up on the sails of the Opera House. 
If they didn't, Damien Cook let slip, they'd already gone back to training. Yes, the rabbit. Yeah, cheated, well, yeah. Cheated. Burgess originally. <laughs> there was Burgess originally. But... All right. <laughs> and then Wayne said, oh, that was just a, a, a pre-plan, just in case we needed to, right? <laughs> <laughs> just to get a feel for the joint. Because that's, yeah. the, that's the tragedy of the, this pandemic, is that rugby league players have not been able to be around the joint in order to get a good <laughs> feel around the joint. It's been terrible. <laughs> but you make a good point, Stephen. None of these experts are known. I mean, the original yeah. biosecurity and pandemic experts who turned out to be the one woman, she gave an interview with Andrew Webster and the Herald under, under a guarantee of anonymity. I mean, what has the overlord got on these people? I mean, do they yeah. Yeah. actually show themselves? Will they be injected with something? I want to know. I wonder, yeah, actually, maybe if, if these people are, in fact, uh, that if you looked at the biosecurity and pandemic expert and weapons expert, you have a look at their CV and there's actually a pseudonym for Peter Volandis. And he is, in yeah. fact, the expert. University of Wollongong in... degree. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> and, 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 of course, at the heart of this is the politics. And, and Deputy Premier John Barillaro has said that NRL is the tonic we need to get through this virus. And a senior government official described Barillaro as freelancing when he was doing that. But, uh, Stephen, you raised with me earlier today the debate that's going on about whether if resumption day happens, and let's face it, we all hope and dream and pray that it does, as to whether rugby league constitutes an essential service. Well, exactly. I mean, look, uh, you, 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 you couldn't say going to Mossman to the, to the Rugby Union Club and going essential service. You know, obviously it's a highfalutin bloody hobby over that way, you know, and it's, a, it's, it's money makers and economists and bankers, et cetera, et cetera. Rugby League, of course, as we know. You know, talk, talk to the rooster man that was in the newspaper today. Rugby League was his life. He's got right. Alzheimer's. And, we, and, and Rugby League is now back, backing him up to put him into, you know, good care for his later years. That's Rugby League. That's what it does for people. We know that. Men are league. Mentally, central service. And I believe that there's actually things like filmmaking going on. There are services that we take for granted as sort of uh, entertainment, whereas rugby league, I think, is grassroots, working man's essential service. Well, 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 well look, I think in the, words, in the words of Overlord Volandis, Australia hmm. wouldn't be Australia without rugby league. Rugby league, totally. It's, it's so true. And, I mean, I, mean, I mean, let's face it, work came down the pipe this week that Neighbours has restarted filming. That's exactly right. Is there a T-shirt with that? Is there a, that T-shirt on a quote yet? Australia wouldn't be Australia without, without rugby league. league. We, mm. we could do a second version. Second version. Yeah. And, okay. Um, what are our thoughts about exactly what the comp will look like? Well, uh, bloody good, I'd say. Except they need some crowds. That might not happen for a while. I would say that Freddie is the winner in this whole thing, though, with State of Origin. Is that not the, the, the duel in the crown? That's going to be pushed till later in the year. Uh, the Queensland Premier has always been completely railroaded by Freddie. You don't turn up 3 0, we win. <laughs> Correct? <laughs> and that's been fantastic that Freddie's been speaking to Palaszczuk as if, as if yeah. they're on an equal footing and that he's actually won one over her. It's hysterical. <laughs> You don't want to set him down? Fine. <laughs> we'll have it like our own. We'll, we'll win. <laughs> he described her comments as ludicrous and went on to say that if she, if she persists with this, she'll suffer voter backlash. I mean, he understands the political <laughs> like, like he's speaking in the terms. Alish, I understand. A uh, lot, of, lot of talk about uh, the, the various models and, you know, everyone's going to have to come to New South Wales. How do we get... Uh, New Zealand through quarantine. I say I've got a really easy solution to that. Don't let the Warriors back into the comp. But um, <laughs> every time the I, it's a national rugby league. But uh, a lot of talk about playing in bubbles. And yeah. um, um, we were able to get uh, some exclusive audio from an innovation committee meeting about the bubble and what it actually means. So listen. See, it's not really a bubble. A lot of people think it's an igloo. But it's really just a plastic divider. Can you uh, go in the bubble? Well, you have to put so many things on because of the germs. The gloves, the mask, it's a whole production. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we think that the NRL sort all that through? The whole production? <laughs> That will the be mask. the theme. That'll, that'll be the theme, won't it? I mean, won't it be like Seinfeld in the whole sort of like design, the look of the whole stadium, the way the cameras go through the bubble, you know, all masked up, and it'll be a blurry screen until they wipe it clear, you know, and there'll be people spraying stuff all over the joint. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> I just, 
I just think like four five one. I don't know. Then drive it to Australia, you know, all over again. <laughs> sort of green. The, <laughs> I, I, I think they can't have crowds in at this stage, but they have to have rugby league flavour. So that yes, to me yeah. does say the hot dog seller, the program seller, uh, and a, you know some touch judges, even though they can't touch, you know, sideline official. Yeah, yeah. But they'll all be gloved up and masked up. It's going to be. They're talking about mixed well, message about just playing. I mean, the mixed message will be watching the production. As you've seen um, UK Parliament, they're all situated, you know, six seats away from each other, correct? So if you could do that spacing in, you know, Sydney Creek Ground or ANZ or whatever, and you just put out a, a, an expression of interest for the loudest voices in rugby league, so you get, you know, 10 from the Parramatta and 10 from Penrith and you get the, the hot dog seller's got a really loud voice and, you know, the, uh, the newspaper seller, like the old days, uh, what else, you know, um, the, the, beer, the beer cup dude, you know, making lots of noise but separated Six seats. Peanuts in the shell, yeah, 40 exactly, cents. Exactly. Peanuts exactly. in the shell. Yeah, fine. That's what the you merchandise mean. guy. And even though Trump doesn't understand this difference between testing and um, monitoring, obviously the two conditions of entry would be you get the temperature check on the forehead, right? Yes. The temperature is fine, you're in, and then there'll be a decibel thing. And you've got to yell and hit a certain level. Above a point, yeah. And yeah, if the yeah. temperature is below a certain level and the decibel is above a certain level, you are in the game. Yeah, probably yeah, in phase yeah. two after the empty arena experience. Yeah. Well, when they had the, the, um, the experiments setting this up, the empty, the empty nests at um, Cogra Jubilee Oval and at uh, the eighth wonder um, at Cogra Jubilee Oval, when the dragons played there in front of no crowd, <laughs> about 10 people turned up and there's one particular gate underneath yeah. the stadium at the Northeast corner where you can see a little part of the field. And these guys yeah. have turned up and they're just sitting there yelling and they made so so much noise. They made more noise than the hundred or so people who turned up at Leichhardt to watch the Tigers. So I, th- I think they just do that. There's, there's, Cause then rugby league can then wash its rugby league. Sorry. can wash its hands off them and say, no, these people just turned up. It's nothing to do with us. No, well, no, and, and, no. and the interesting thing there is that we were like, to think we're, we, we like to think we're pioneers, but in fact, uh, they're playing in the Asian region. They're already playing baseball. They've got some preseason in South Korea going. And in Taiwan, they played, and I do love this term, resumption baseball, like resumption league and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, the, in, the Thai, in the Taiwanese model, uh, no fans, but drum playing robots scattered through the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. That's what we need. Stability, Chris. Stability. Right. Stability and work-life balance. And what that does is it leads me to think about the relocated Melbourne storm. So yes. the, the press week this week suggested because the storm will have to go north, young people, and play in, the, in New South Wales. Here are the choices. Mm. Albury Wodonga, I get that. Yep. Yarrawonga Malawa, Malawa, I should say. Coral Rutha, Coral Rutha Glen or Cobram Baruga. The first question I've got to ask is why are all these regions hyphenated? Yes. Well, I think you'll find that most of them are hyphenated because they're a, a conurbation across the border. So Albury is New South Wales, Wodonga is Victoria, yeah. big border in the middle. So I think that's probably and why it, it is. So they wouldn't be staying Albury or Donga. They'd have to stay Albury. So they put the and, water and, and, wrong. You guys said Yeah, it's it's, stupid it's, idea. It's, they're sitting across rivers. But can, and I said, this is where we need an overlord because you, you, you've got these, um, these different factions. You've got the New Zealand faction, you've got the Queensland faction, you, and you've got the Melbourne Storm robot faction. And somehow they're not all going to fit together naturally, you know. So someone's got to oh. stamp their, their, their bloody domination over this whole damn thing. And it's Surely. not like the raging bull, you know, t- telling Darius to get hardened up and come on down. You know what I mean? So the Surely, the, needed- Surely the Melbourne storm would go to Oberon in central New South Wales because Oberon is the birthplace and home of Craig Bellamy. It's where he comes right. from. So Oberon's yes. a perfect spot. And what they can bring up with them is a robot with a cowbell. Go! No more I, than one, please, Dennis. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to say Oberon is the birthplace of the silicon chip, but obviously... I got that. <laughs> yeah, nice, I think, too. Yeah, Silicon Valley, Oberon, okay. And, and, and when we talk storms, we talk Lord Lucifer himself, and he's been pretty much... I mean, I hate to say that Cameron Smith is a naysayer, but Cameron Smith's a naysayer. He's basically <laughs> shut the comp down. I hate it when you say that. Yeah, and, and then... Do we really want to resume it yet and whatever? And he goes, I don't know, this idea of being in a bubble, uh, having to live in New South yeah. Wales. But he made a very poignant point and uh, he, he actually wanted to explain to the media when he talks about these reasons about when the comp should st- stop, when it should start, where they should play, how he should exist. He had this to say at the press conference. Where are you going? 
I can't believe you guys are laughing at my uncle Joseph. That the elephant man is on my family tree. He does a great, he right. does a great impression of John Hurt, doesn't he? Because <laughs> in all of this, of all the people to remind us that we're all human beings first, <laughs> Cameron Smith. And, and Chris, you haven't seen into his house at this point in time. He's got his swimming dacks on, and like you know, Richie, Richie's just swimming in money. It is, he doesn't care. <laughs> Is, I it. <laughs> and you know why? Because he's had a great break. He's resting the body and he's got another year of testimonials and fundraisers to go. But what he's doing for fun with, with his swimming pool full of money, him and Barb, what they do at them every morning, they throw Barb's ring in there. They stir it up yeah. and then they play this and game, try and find the ring it. amongst the gold. <laughs> and that's a little moment of Todd. <laughs> exactly. Todd, we, re- we remember you well, so fondly. <laughs> kind of the ultimate thing is Greenberg's redemption. I'll have to go on a picaresque journey and throw Barb's ring into a volcano to get all <laughs> <laughs> Do we uh, come back after a break? Let's come back after a break. Yes. We're quite Australians indeed. He looks fired up. I don't know if that's a good idea. Right. Okay. So, as we know, rugby league when it climbed climbed out of the primordial swamp many many years ago, there were two bugs. There were two little like single celled you know organisms, and they were fighting each other. And of course, one of them realised that they needed more strength and more power, so they gathered more forces around them. And the other side went, "Well, we need more forces." Now we've got this whole thing of of layers of administration and players and coaches and and benefactors and sponsors and uh, and uh, betting agencies, etc. And then we've got the overlord, and he's trying to squash all that dissent and trying to morph us back into one single celled amoeba that just travels forward and obliterates all the competition in its pathway. Uh, but rugby league, of course, cannot help but fight itself. And recently, some of those hotheads in the business. Well, one not so much a hothead. Ray Hadley, we know, bolts. He loves a fight. Loves a fight in any any shape or form whatsoever. He took on apparently. Well, Buzz Rothfield didn't know who's going to be taken on, but apparently he just wanted to have a chat in the bar, and he was in a hotel room somewhere. Uh, what a drink! A and drink. He kept, uh, annoying, annoying uh, Hadley saying, "Hey, bolts, come on down. I'm in the bar. Let's have, we, there's a bit, bit of you know a bit of you know war of words going on. Come down. Let's talk it out. You know, journalist to journalist. Can you get that?" <laughs> <laughs> he demanded he come down and sort it out over a drink as men do, you know, at the bar, you know. And of course, he wouldn't come. And he's up in his room, buzzes, right? I've had enough. I'm ringing, I'm going to go upstairs, knock on the door, knock on the door, opens up. What does Handy do? Boom. Knocks him flat down and closes the door again. What do you make of that? Well, first of all, um, uh, I think buzzers have been loving the notoriety because I think yes. they would never willingly go into a fight. But now he, at least he can say I was in one, albeit what? unintentionally and never through a blow and anger. What was that deprivation syndrome you're talking about, Chris? Relevance deprivation syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever had relevance? Well, it's funny you should say that, Stephen, because uh, in, in this crude medium, and I will post it on the Fire Up Facebook as a result of this uh, podcast, but if you can see there a picture of Buzz today sporting a shark's COVID-19 uh, face mask, that was your idea, Stephen. It was my idea. And well, so Buzz is at the cutting edge now of uh, safe sports fashion. And so I think this is all just part of his campaign to, um, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a case where, look, you know, basically he seems to be down to one column on a Monday in the Astonisher. Uh, yeah. He needs to be doing some stuff. I mean, I love his, <laughs> his comment about it is that Hadley whacked me and then slammed me in the face, so I had no chance of getting a hit in myself, you know, like that usual yeah, 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 yeah. I jumped into the lift once I got yeah. up off the floor, went downstairs, rang his, rang his room and said, car park now, none of this King Heath stuff. But he opened yeah, me yeah. up. So, so I think yeah. what Buzz is saying is he goes, I did challenge Hadley for the cheap shot, wanted to resolve it as men should. Unfortunately, I was bleeding like a stuck pig and couldn't be. You call, it, you call that a feud? That's not a feud. That's right. Not- Let's just drum up a few inches in a bit of in a rag newspaper, correct? Now, what else we got? What do you got, Dennis? Well, there was, there's been a few. There's um, obviously, the, you know, you're talking about the amoebas wanting to fight, and and one of the most angry amoebas is, is Paul Kent, 
And he's yes. filthy because he's got nothing to, without footy, he's got nothing to fight about, no one to poke. So he's had a go at Michael Ennis, who everyone loves, the friendly, cuddly, yeah. lovable Michael Ennis. He's had a go at Michael. <laughs> All Michael was doing was saying he likes Todd Greenberg because, you know, Todd used to give him a cuddle when he was playing for the Bulldogs. Obviously, Kenty doesn't like cuddles. Kenty hates cuddles. So Kenty's had a big go. And only a couple of days later, what happens? He has a go at Ben Eichen. Again, lovable, bespectacled Glenn Eichen. How can, how can you have a go at Ben Eichen? But Kenty went in there, both guns blazing. It was sensational. Loving to fight someone like an amoeba. What were Is they fighting met? about? Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, I tuned out. I don't know what they were fighting about. <laughs> maybe about resumption day. Maybe about playing in Queensland. And maybe, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really understand it. I did, what I did love, though, was Yvonne Sampson. Did a great job. I don't know if you remember the the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons where Rocky go, hey, uh, Bullwinkle, hey Rocky, watch me pull the rabbit out of my hat. And the animators would just keep Rocky dead still. They'd, they'd save money on animation by keeping him still. <laughs> That's what Rupert did with with Yvonne Sampson. Just kept it. Is it, it, it I'm dead say, still. Isn't that a story of the times that Kenty, you know, doesn't want a hug, and isn't that so appropriate right now in our isolation? But the truth of the matter is, you know. They're desperate to survive with some sort of content on here, and they've got to use what they've got at the cheapest possible rates for as long as possible. So if anybody can keep talking about nothing, all the better. That, that's an incredible segue, Stephen, into the fact that Dennis will be on Fox League live <laughs> later tonight after this recording. <laughs> Generally about 7.45 p.m. No, it's generally about 7.59 p.m. with 60 seconds to go. Hey, Billy, Billy, I'm a bit of space, Dennis. And there is no... What I do is I... If I'm not able to watch it live because I'm... Uh, on the PWA Twitch feed and my wrestling friends, but uh, I record it and I, I freeze it to see Kenty's face just as Yvonne is introducing Dennis because you, and, and then, and then when there's where he establishes that that line must have been the punchline just a little bit. Like sometimes he does when the camera's on him on 360 and he, he's remembered that he's meant to smile. So again, <laughs> Dennis will do the punchline. You get half a second of stone followed by a wan smile. It's great TV. And particularly when Kenny has admitted himself that the situation on television is so dire that his favourite TV right now is reruns of old fights in the dance. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that you recorded it so you can play it back later and turn your back and walk out of the room while I'm on on purpose, not accidentally. Oh, no, no, I, 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 I can't I ask you... live tonight, Dennis. Can I ask you a behind the scenes question? In those, um, you know, the pre isolation days where we could cuddle and hug, uh, did you used to give uh, Kenny a cuddle or a hug? And what was his uh, response? I, I can honestly say I never cuddled or hugged Kenty. Um, okay. I, I have spoken okay. to him. Um, yes, but go. yeah, there's never been any physical. He puts off a vibe, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes, yeah no, I've been sledged by poor Ken. You've been what? Cuddled? Sledged. Oh, yeah, same. Sledged. That's, that's, that's not saying much, Chris. <laughs> You guys would not be aware of this, but I had a brief dalliance on another network and uh, oh, yes. and uh, they were discussing something that I had said about Paul Kent's report of the Dally M's, that it wasn't really much of an affair, not much was happening. And I just simply relayed that on my show and then that was brought up on the Sunday afternoon rugby league show on that network. And Kent just went on a diatribe that no one listens to that show or my show, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> And I just go, all I said was what you said, which wasn't much of a gig. But anyway, so I feel like I belong <laughs> now. I belong now to rugby league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh. I haven't had the pleasure, Chris, I'm afraid. I'm a nobody. There's still time. Still time. Okay. Uh, is that it, boys? I, 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 I think th there's probably just two things left to say. One is I, I was just charmed. Uh, in what's been such a difficult time, and can I say unprecedented time, uncharted waters, dot, dot, dot. Uncharted waters, yeah. You're such a wordsmith. No one's been saying things like that. That's marvellous uh, language you're using, that the vocabulary, why is no one saying that? Well, this, this is something I've actually trademarked because I came up with this myself. Did you, Chris? Do you understand Beautiful. that we're all in this together? But, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> De Australian Deputy Chief Medical Officer Paul Kelly has raised concerns about resumption day, which, as you can see on the T-shirt, Dennis, 28th of May, due to the age of some of the coaches in the NRL, citing Wayne Bennett, age 70, and Ricky Stewart, age 53. Uh, Ricky apparently took a texter from Craig <laughs> Bellamy, age 61, who was in 
incredibly amused by Ricky being seen as a coach in risk. And, and I just simply say to Overlord Volanders, what have we got there, Dennis? We've got a whole lot of Ricky's texts. Uh, a whole lot of Ricky texts. <laughs> can, can, I, can I simply say that I hope Overlord Volanders is taking the ages of the coaches into the calculation when there's resumption day, Steve? Look, can you just also, like, pointing out, obviously, it's Paul, who did you say it was? It was Paul Kelly? Paul yeah, Kelly. Form, yeah, former Sydney Swans player, former AFL star. Of course he's <laughs> going to have a go at the game. All these Paul Kellys, they all hate the game. Yeah. And lead yeah. singer of the Coloured Girls. That's yeah. the one. He, he, sings about he's also skipping, yeah. he sings about skipping towards the, the MCG, not the SCG, doesn't he? No. Out of town, it's interlopers. <laughs> Relevancies. Yeah. Geez, he's busy, though. <laughs> Are we done, Stephen and Dennis? Look, I think so. I think I would like to also pay tribute to Todd one last time before he disappears <laughs> into the sunset and just say, I think Todd brought a magnificent growth in the game. I mean, the colour and movement, uh, Keith Urban, you know, uh, we, we, we had Briggs, you know, we had same sex, we had dancing girls, we had music, we had fireworks. I think it was a glorious time for rugby league. Nobody can take that away from him. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin, Jessica Mowboy. Bega. We had Bega. Daryl Braithwaite. And, and there'd be no more <laughs> fitting tribute, I think, Stephen, because I think you're, I, I'd like to echo your words. I've really enjoyed Todd and his contribution, and he will be greatly missed. And I simply want to take this final opportunity to send our very best wishes to Mr. Greenberg and his extended and his family, family in these unprecedented and difficult times. And there'd be nothing better to end with an amusing musical tribute to Todd Greenberg. Unfortunately, Dennis is saving that for Fox League a couple of hours later, and he's taking us out on a musical tribute to Overlord <laughs> Volandis. Uh, over to you, Dennis. I, I haven't. Fire it's up, it's not up, that I'm it. saving it. I haven't actually written it. So straight away, just do it now. So it's a plan that I'll... Dennis. Okay. Um, I'm just going to have to switch pages because I don't know the words. Here we go. <clears throat> Everyone's fighting from the top to the ground. Paul Kent, Michael Ennis, Kenton Ben, I can now. Buzz Roth feel like a school going round for round. Mara Jiggly and Palaszczuk are shutting the borders down. But there's a hero, someone with a plan, someone with a history of taking command. He got the barrier draw like on the opera house sales. Kept racing, going when all of the sports have failed. He's for Landis. He's the man. When everything's breaking, everything's breaking down. I've got to change the page here. Bear with me, boys. <laughs> He's got money from the bank. He's got the broadcast partners eating from his hand. He set the world on fire. He looks like a vampire. Let me tell you, boys, we're looking at Philanders. He's Philanders. Philanders, 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 Philanders. He's Philanders. <laughs> vampire. <laughs> well, he looks a little bit like a vampire. He's our overlord. <laughs> Bye, boys. Okay. Okay, thank Bye you very Australians. much. Australians.